So for those of you that have been living on the rocks, last year Intel released their first generation of ARC graphics cards. Now this was Intel's first attempt or proper attempt into the graphics card market, particularly when it comes to gaming. And since then, we've been trying to collect all of the models that they've made available. Now we have looked at each of these models in the past, but today we wanted to do a bit of a roundup, particularly since their drivers have matured, to see which one is best if you wanted to join Team Blue right now. So since collecting all of the Intel graphics cards, or at least the ones that are available to us, we've actually been pretty impressed with their releases. Now, all of the Intel graphics cards didn't have a very good start. They had a ton of driver issues, but that has actually started to clear up now, and the drivers have started to mature. We do actually have all of the cards available to us now, so we can actually do some proper benchmarking to do a bit of a comparison. For those of you that don't know, Intel have actually released three different graphics cards, starting from a very super entry-level card, such as this one, all the way up to something that's probably classed as mid-range in the form of the Intel Arc A770. Now the A770 was the first one that we got and we did a lot of content on that in the past so go back to the channel and take a look if you want to see how it runs independently particularly on how it used to run when we got it up till now where we have done refreshes to show you what kind of performance gains they've actually got through the drivers. But today we're going to be taking a look at all three and we're going to start with this one. Now this is the Intel Arc A380. It is a very entry level graphics card and it's actually pretty cheap. And unfortunately they don't actually do an LE version of this. We had to pick up the ASRock Mini ITX version because that is actually the only one available to us in the UK. I will admit though that this card is not as impressive as the others when it comes to performance as well as when it comes to design. If you take a look at the card, we've got exposed PCB, kind of a janky looking cooler that's been wrapped to the top of it. It also requires an 8 pin power supply which is a bit of a shame because these would have made great upgrades for those Dell and X office PCs but unfortunately because of those things many people are going to be limited on how they can do it. It is a 6 gigabyte card which is very questionable nowadays particularly with a lot of modern titles out there but to be honest with the power of this card you're probably not going to be playing them in anything above medium or low settings anyway so that's probably not an issue for this card but I'm sure we'll see when we we start comparing it to the others. The A380 also only costs around £130 but is that worth it? Well I'm sure we'll find out when we start taking a look at some benchmarks. The second card that we've got is this one. Now this is the Intel Arc A750 and to be honest this is probably the one that Intel have focused on the most. The model that we've got here is of course the LE model and Intel really went out when they did their LE models. For those of you that don't know what an LE model is, it's kind of Intel's version of Nvidia's Founders Edition or AMD's reference models. It's the one that is designed by them and to be honest they did a fantastic job. These cards are absolutely gorgeous although they're not great when you come to take them apart but that's okay if you're not going to be doing that. They are pretty power efficient and they are pretty sturdy so you're not going to go wrong with picking up one of these but this A750 is actually the middle one that they do. It's actually quite difficult to place these when it comes to the tiering system due to the driver issues that they've had and they're always improving but generally this is around an RTX 3060 in terms of performance. As I said before, they are absolutely gorgeous and Intel thought of everything. A twin fan system with an 8-pin and a 6-pin power connection and then this gorgeous backplate which kind of shows off what the card is. The A750 is an 8GB version and on paper it is far superior in terms of performance to the A380 but hopefully we'll see that when we come to the results. The last card in their lineup was of course the A770. Now unfortunately our A770 is currently sitting in our streaming system so you get to look at a box instead. The A770 looks exactly the same as the A750 particularly the LE model obviously and that's the one that we got except it has a few different features. The LE model of the A770 has RGB lighting and it actually runs around a strip on the side as well as in the place here where this is chrome on the A750 and it also has RGB lighting on the fan system. Along with that it is a more powerful card not by much when you actually look on paper but it does come with 16 gigabytes of VRAM which many people are saying is a must now. So they are generally quite Quite popular and sometimes they are actually difficult to get hold of. Now along with the LE versions there are many AIB versions available of these cards but you do need to double check what you're purchasing. Many of the A770 AIB cards are actually only 8GB and for many that's actually going to put them off so I would advise that you double check the adverts if you're going to purchase one just to make sure which model that you're actually picking up. Pricing of the cards is actually quite difficult at the moment because Intel have actually been doing some quite rapid price drops recently for the Intel Arc A380, you're looking at about £130. That is a little bit of a shame. I was hoping that it would actually come down a little bit more in price because 
when we actually looked at this card on its own, it wasn't quite worth that kind of money. In particular, when you actually started comparing it to the other cards, it didn't really make that much sense. The Intel Arc A750 has recently had a pretty decent price drop. When we picked ours up, we paid about £230 for it. But now, if you look online, and there's plenty of these around, you can pick them up for about £200. That actually kind of makes sense for where this card sits, and it's much cheaper than the alternatives from other manufacturers. The A770, though, is a little bit of a unicorn. These cards were originally for over £300, and to be honest, if you can even find one today in terms of an LE model, you're going to be paying over £300 for it there. So it is a substantial lift from the A750, so let's hope that that actually shows through when it comes to the benchmarks. Now obviously to find out how all of these cards compare, we had to do a bit of benchmarking, and in terms of those benchmarks, we did something a little bit different. Instead of using the standard seven game test suite that we did, we actually increased the number of games and that was mostly because the A380 actually struggles to play a lot of the new modern titles. So we've included them in anyway, and obviously they are covered by the A750 and the A770. But I suppose the thing that we need to do really is take a look at those benchmarks and then obviously we'll be able to see which card really does come out on top.
Now for the benchmarks, we actually stuck to just two resolutions, 1080p and 1440p. And that's because neither of these cards are actually advertised as a 4K card. But if you were to go look back through our videos, you will see that in the past where we've tested the A750 as well as the A770, they are both more than capable when it comes to 4K in a lot of games. From those results though, we can see that the A380 is extremely lacking, particularly when it comes to the other cards. It actually had about half of the performance of the A750. Now, when you actually look at these two cards in terms of price, that actually doesn't really make sense because this card is actually about £130, this one is about £200. So for £70 more, you're getting about double the performance. That doesn't mean though that the A380 is completely useless. You can actually get a pretty decent gaming experience. I think in our last video, we kind of compared it really to something like the older RX 470 or RX 570 in terms of performance in modern games. So it's not totally bad, but you can get much better options out there, particularly on the used market, or you do really want to step up to something like the A750. When it came to the A750 versus the A770, unfortunately, there isn't that much of a gap. The A770 performs about five to 10% faster in most games than the A750. And considering it will actually cost you about 50% more in price, I don't think it actually is quite worth it. It does have the 16 gigabytes of VRAM, but that wasn't any kind of hindrance on the games that we were playing. Even the new ones didn't really see that much of a jump due to the 16 gigabytes the A770 offers. But saying that, both graphics cards performed exceptionally well, and I've always been impressed with the performance of these cards. When we take a look at some of those results, we can see that the A750 and the A770 really do perform pretty well in both 1080p and 1440p. In fact, I would suggest that both of these cards are really kind of geared towards 1440p because the performance at that kind of level was exceptionally good. The only game really where we saw a big difference was obviously Doom Eternal, where the A770 managed to pull away in 1080p to 230 frames per second, where the A750 could only get 180. But of course, either of those kind of results are more than playable for everybody. Unfortunately, the A380, we just couldn't get it to start Doom Eternal there. We have heard that there are some inconsistencies in what that card can and can't play, depending on the rest of your platform. So it might be an issue with the rest of our platform, but for as far as we could actually tell, we just couldn't get it to play. And that wasn't the only game. The Last of Us Part 1 wouldn't start on the A380 either, and neither would Cyberpunk 2077. So when it comes to buying an Intel Arc graphics card, which one should you get? And my recommendation at the moment would be the A750. This card for its current price actually seems a bit of a bargain. £200 for a card that pretty much plays most games in 1440p without any kind of issues. You do have the limitation of the 8GB of VRAM and I think that's actually going to affect you more in future. So if you are a more future thinking person that really wants to play with an Intel Arc graphics card, you probably want to stretch to the A770. But then again, will it actually stretch far enough for the money that you're paying? If you can actually get hold of one of these 16GB versions, you're gonna pay around 300 or just over 300 pounds for it. So is it actually worth the extra 100 pounds over the A750? At the moment, I don't think it is. You do get a nice RGB graphics card, that's true, and you get the 16 gigabyte of VRAM, but just looking at our testing alone, that didn't really make much of a difference, particularly for that kind of cost. So this would be my recommendation, but I wanna know what you guys think. Do you have an Intel Arc graphics card? And if you do, which ones you have, let me know down below. And if you don't, let me know which one you would purchase. Is the A750 something that you would decide or would you stretch to the A770? And as always, I'm sure we'll catch you all in the next one.